I'm very pleased with this S2000 Pro all power portable battery station. Now, of all the ones that we've looked at to date, and we've had probably eight or nine that's come through I Love RV Life in the last 12 to 18 months, a uh, little bitty 500 watt up to these larger units that we're looking at now. Uh, this one probably has the most features that I'm most pleased with. Hi, it's Jerry. Well, we've been traveling since 2014, starting in a, just a couple weeks. We'll be having our RV anniversary. How about that? And uh, we've learned a lot since that period of time. One of the things that we've discovered is we need portable power. Yeah, we've got a big gasoline generator, and that helps if we're needing power for, say, days on end without any connection. That's always a benefit. But there are those times where we just need something short term. So all powers sent this unit. This is a model S2000 Pro. You can buy this as a standalone unit or you can buy it as part of what they call a solar generator package. They sent us the solar generator package for us to evaluate. This S2000 Pro unit, I'll be giving you some specs on it in just a minute, as well as two of these these are 100 watt portable solar panels. It's a bright sunny day today. We're going to put these through the test. I'll open this up in just a second and show you all the goodies that come with it so that you can connect it to the solar power station or any other device that you may have out there. There's a lot of interfaces that this thing has that you can plug and play as it goes forward. Here's what I'm excited about. The output of this unit is 2,000 400 watt hours. This is the largest one that we've seen and a, this is in a 36 pound package. It is not, it's not light, but I mean it is portable. It's got nice handles on it. Um, it has a 4,000 watt surge. So what's important about that is uh, the, the refrigerator is going to cut on uh, when this uh, gets plugged in if it needs that. Uh, I'm also going to be running the microwave today to see how that's going to perform on this. That's that's the two big items that pull a lot of drain on this. Other things like, you know, televisions, portable fans, those types of things. We'll plug those in as well. I'm not going to plug them into the interface here. I've got a lot of plugs that I'll be showing you. I'm going to run the entire camper off of this. Let me give you the specs on this unit before we do anything else. Let's look at how this unit is configured. Uh, this has four AC outlets. These are 110 volt, 15 amp style connections. And then we have one 30 amp connection that's located here. All 110 volts, all three of these. We have, they refer to these as a carport or some of us who are a little older call these cigarette lighter adapters. Um, so you can have that for your 12 volt appliance that requires that. We have a refrigerator that we'll be using for that from time to time. We also have a number of different USB connections here. We have the high power, I call these the 100 watt. They run 60 to 100. These are rated at 100 watt USB-C connections. And then we have a wide variety of USB, standard USB, you know, one, two types here that run, you know, typically and the three amp configuration here for most of your appliances that you use like phones and tablets and those types of things as well. We have a number of different button operations. This turns the power on for the unit overall. This button here turns the AC inverter on to power these. Uh, you would typically not operate this unless you're going to be using the AC inverter. This turns on the DC power as well. This will turn on these ports, this, and this has a Bluetooth function. I'm really excited to see not only Bluetooth monitoring, but Bluetooth control. And this, XT60 connections, I really like these connections for solar panels. Um, this thing is really nice. Now let me flip this around to the back and show you one more benefit about this unit. 
You've seen me charge these units before uh, where they have the power brick. Not this one. I don't have to have a power brick. It's a direct plug-in with the charger built inside the unit. I really, really like that. Just, just another, not another thing I have to carry around to be able to use my power station. That's awesome. So here is the All Powers app. And uh, we'll tap on it. They give you a QR code to download. Uh, we'll look at all the devices that are here. I'll tap this one, give it just a second. And uh, we'll go ahead, and the Bluetooth function is very, very simple. It's just push the button, it finds it, uh, and you turn it on. Uh, we'll go ahead and open this unit up. You can rename it if you want to. Um, here's the unit. I've got it fully charged right now. It's showing 100%. Uh, 45 days of power remaining. Well, not really. Um, the thing that I like about this, look in the middle, you can see how much input you have so when we hook it up to solar we'll see how much solar is producing when we're using the unit uh, you'll see how much output power now this is something else that's pretty exciting look at uh, the function down here uh, i can turn the ac off and you see that happening on the screen of the unit as well i can turn the ac back on uh, i love that function to be able to save power if we don't we've got it hooked up i don't need to be using it um, and we're just using it for, say, DC options. I don't have to use the inverter and consume power. This turns on all the USB ports, the uh, car port adapter. I like that as well. And then if you see down below, I can set this up for 60 hertz, or if you're in Europe or um, outside of the United States, you can set this up for 50 hertz as well. So it'll work in both different types of power. This is, a, this is a great app. I've not had a unit with a Bluetooth connection before. I'm really excited about this. All Power also provided a few extra accessories. They've got a nice cover that goes on it to be able to protect it when you have it in storage and not being used. Uh, that's very, very nice. And then this bag here with a number of different cables for the unit. Uh, we have to be able to charge it, do we not, uh, when we are not hooked up to things. So we have your computer style uh, AC plug that plugs into the back that I was showing you. And then uh, you can get this into your uh, car cigarette lighter adapter or car port adapter as they typically call them now. And notice it has the uh, Anderson plug on it. This is the same thing that we're going to be using for our solar panels as well. So that's a 12 volt input. These are 12 volt solar panels. Um, so that can work as well and it's very 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 heavy duty so I think you'll be able to get the full 15 amps out of that cigarette lighter car port adapter that's there as well okay you'll probably hear the inverter in the background there's a slight buzz that's what you're hearing there what you're looking on the screen right now is a sine wave so I have an oscilloscope connected to the 110 volt AC output of this uh, S2000 Pro and uh, the reason I want to do this is I want to make sure the inverter is providing clean, pure sine wave power and that it's not modified sine wave. So what you want to be able to see is exactly what we have on the screen. You want to see that smooth uh, up and down signal that we have here without getting into a lot of technical components. Um, you don't want to see a lot of jagged lines. Now, I do not have a load on this as of yet. And if you'll notice right here, there is the smallest little bump here in this sound wave sine wave i'm not concerned about that um, this is really good clean power but one of the things that can happen with these inverters is when you put them under load and actually start drawing power from them uh, those sine waves can get jagged so i've got a hamilton beach 650 watt toaster i'm going to turn that on put this under load you just saw the little bump now what i'm yeah and i'm actually looking at the screen right now we have 600 and 640 watts 645 watts so that's perfect now here's the good thing a lot of times these inverters need a load to be able to operate clean and if you remember that little bump that was right here it's actually gone now so this is exactly what you want to see with a good high quality inverter you want to see a very smooth not jagged sine wave and then when it goes under load and you start pulling power from it, you don't want to see that distort. You don't want to see these top peaks flatten out. Uh, that's a problem. And where it gets to be a problem if, if you're running sensitive electronics like a television, uh, you'll see a, a television. It'll start getting a lot of artifacts on the screen. You don't want to see that. 
uh, your computer may not operate properly if you're you know running a uh, something like a, a standard a household style router that router might not perform uh, properly so you'll just see a lot of you know a lot of um, artifacts on there and then it'll affect your electronics as well but this is absolutely perfect this is exactly what I want to see as much as I enjoy talking about the technology of these units and all their specifications really the proof is how well is it going to perform I've got all these appliances in here refrigerators and microwaves and TVs and Roku sound bars and up in that cabinet up there I've got a very very nice cradle point cellular router high performance cellular router we want to be able to use that uh, when we're out traveling and about so all these things consume AC power and uh, some of them consume a lot of AC power and refrigerator is going to have a bit of a surge to it I've got some things to adapt to that but at this stage I just want to see how this performs by itself um, so we're going to put this all through the test of just running all these devices and the good thing is I'll be able to monitor it from the Bluetooth I won't even have to be outside to be able to see it now I do have a progressive dynamics uh, converter charger uh, it's 75 amps it's a big boy that keeps our lithium batteries charged up and then you know when we're not running on the batteries um, it provides all the 12 volt power that you see for all these lights on here now I just kill the breaker on that for for this test I don't need to be powering that too uh, I will flip it back on once I get enough of the batteries down that the uh, progressive dynamics needs to kick in and charge it I got to get the the battery consumption down a little bit first uh, before that's going to happen but that's not my primary focus I want to see what this does on a hundred and ten volts 30 amp connection with all the stuff here working and the good thing is I'll be able to monitor it on Bluetooth that's kind of exciting to me uh, I've never been able to do that I've always had to run back and forth back and forth to see how it's going to perform then uh, once I use a little bit of this capacity I got to get it down just a little bit we'll uh, take all these solar panels I've got two of these and uh, we'll take these guys and we'll set them up and uh, I've got some nice bright Sun out there for a few more hours and uh, we'll just see I just really want to see I'm not gonna let it run for hours and hours hours on end I just want to see how much power can come into this unit and how quickly we can estimate that it'll charge it up with 200 amps of power so that's pretty exciting too now this also has a UPS style function so I can charge it that's really important and operate it at the same time so let's say that we've used this at night uh, and it's gotten a little bit low I can you know get the solar panels out the next day start charging it back up and if I need to be using it during that charge period can do that too so that's a that's a that's a pretty good function all right let's uh, get it hooked up and see how this is going to perform let's look at uh, how I've got this set up for our portable power so I've just stuck this inside of our storage bay this is it located here at the bottom and you'll see that I've just got a standard style 30 amp RV uh, extension cord that's located here and this is what we do when we pull over to rest stop we turn this on um, I take this, I use this for my generator, my regular generator as well. It just kind of arms out. I haven't turned the AC power on it yet. And I just route it through the side here. This would be the configuration that we would use. Turned on the uh, AC power here. We're seeing that we do have some wattage pull on it right now. I, it can't be much. There we go. We just jumped up to 135 as far as power goes we can see that we're at 60 Hertz uh, we're at a hundred a hundred percent battery capacity and we have lots of hours left over <laughs> now here's the other thing you can see from this standpoint you can see that we're running on the AC plug again that's going to be this plug or any of these devices that are up here as well and uh, let's look at the Bluetooth app and see what that looks like so here's the app we're looking at it we're seeing that it's pulling uh, what 118 watts right now that's not much still at 100 percent capacity and you also see that the uh, ac inverter is on so let's go upstairs and start running some things and capacity wise it says we have uh what 10 hours almost 11 hours of capacity remaining uh running on this so that's that's a lot um, let's see what else is running upstairs we'll turn the refrigerator on we'll turn the microwave on we'll really give this thing a push 
I'm back at the fifth wheel. Uh, we have got a couple things going on. We saw on the app, and I verified it. It's so great having this app that I can actually monitor it here inside the fifth wheel. We're running 1, 12, 113, 114. It's moving back and forth. That's this GE refrigerator. Now, the downside with these refrigerators, they have a capacity kick when that compressor comes on. That's what usually causes these uh, power stations to go into an overdrive. Now, with this one, we're not even we're not even touching the capacity at 2,400 watts of capacity out of that 30 amp connection, and then another 4,000 watts of surge. I, I, you know, I don't have enough refrigerators to put on here to be able to test that. But here's the big boy. This is what always causes us a problem when we have these generators. This thing's 1,500 watts, uh, and uh, all the generators we've had up to date, uh, portable power stations to date that we've used, we've only got two that would work this, but then when the refrigerator would cut on, it would cause them to go into uh, a bit of an overdrive. Again, we have 4,000 watt surge, that'll handle these things popping on. So I'm going to turn on a bunch of things. I'm going to turn, I'm going to leave the refrigerator running, I'm going to turn this on, I'm going to turn our cradle point on, well, that is our, you know, our uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, that we have and uh, I don't know maybe some TVs and some other things as well so what I've got this is just two cups of water in a Pyrex glass uh, I don't like running these things empty and I'm just gonna turn this guy on and let him run for let's say four minutes there we go let's see what the uh, output looks like now now you're seeing this it said that it's rated 1500 watts but we're only showing what right at 14 1450 watts being used you can see the capacity is really starting to pull on that unit 98 percent left that'll probably improve it as well we're going to let that go we'll let that keep going i'm going to keep this running i'm going to turn our cradle point on turn that on <laughs> so that'll take just a minute for the cradle point to boot up so we still got the microwave going again right you know 2400 watt capacity we got a little ways to go yet we're right at about 1500 watts with the cradle point coming on Let's go over here and turn the TV on. And there's Sling. We'll just go ahead and since we've got the uh, Wi-Fi going, we'll just see what all of this looks like all at the same time. Now, the thing about it is, even without me turning that back on, let's see what our power looks like. Let's see if my Bluetooth will still reach this far. Yeah, now the, my Bluetooth is over there at the other end of the camper. With the refrigerator running, the cradle point running, the microwave running for another minute and a half. I've got the TV on. I've got this. Uh, I have got uh, the Roku soundbar on, and we're not even at 1,700 watts yet. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's go get a fan. So we haven't killed it yet. <laughs> this is a uh, the fan that we use. This is just one of those big air fans that you have going on and um, again let me put readers on here we'll uh, see what we can do when we run this guy uh, we're currently at 16.5 uh, fans on it's at quite at 17 we'll put it on high and I'll turn on the rotate so along with Oh, the microwave just stopped. Let's turn it back on. Okay, I turned the microwave back on. Gee, I've got a lot of stuff happening right now. I've got um, TV going. I've got a 1500 watt microwave. I've got a uh, refrigerator running. I've got the cradle point router running. I've got a fan running and we're at just, just at 1700 watts. I, I don't have anything else to turn on. All my, all my lights are coming off the battery but that's all my AC appliance has to be able to run here um, that's quite interesting uh, I've got bubbly water now in the microwave there we go I won't bother turning the camera off let's see we have steam we have steam is it showing up <laughs> here we go put my face in front of it we've got steamy hot water here uh, that's coming out of the microwave and of course when that microwave cuts back off we're down to this I'm loving this uh, we're at 250 right at 248 248 250 watts when I'm not running the microwave 
That's with the fan running. I'm going to turn the fan off now. And just sitting here running, is the refrigerator still going? Refrigerator is still operating. Uh, the cradle point is still operating. The TV and the sound bar is still operating. So I've got all that going on. And when I'm looking at the app now, boy, this has been going a while, 213 watts, and I used 11% of the battery uh, for that exercise. Now, let, let's face it, I'm not going to run this microwave for hours and hours and hours. Uh, it's just going to be a periodic type thing, right? Oh, I know what let's do. Joan likes to do her hair. Let's get a hair dryer. Okay, I went... I went and raided Joan's uh, you know, drawer upstairs where she keeps all of her foo-foo stuff. So let's see how that's going to work. I'm going to go ahead, you know, when, when this is going on, if it's early in the morning, the refrigerator is going to have to run, right? And I want to be entertained, even though I like watching Joan fix her hair. Of course I do. And uh, of course I do. <laughs> so here we go. Let's see how this is going to work. All right, so... Cradle Point Router is working, TV's going, Roku Soundbar is going, and let me do this so that I can monitor it as well. Let's see how this is working. All right, we're at 210 watts, and the hair dryer is on hot and on high. Baby, 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 look at that. 1,530 watts running this thing. All right, so we could run that for a while. But here's the here's the other thing she does as well. She has she has this uh, device, something I don't have to worry about, to straighten her hair. And what will happen is she'll take this and plug it in and let it heat up. Now, I think this is where I'm going to break the unit. Let's see. And there is an on-off button here. Okay, here we go. It's heating up. Let's see what it is pulling. So it's, you know, blinking red. It's heating up. And let's see how much power it's pulling right now. Sorry, I've got too many lights on in here. I'm in the dark all of a sudden. Well, this is not as hot as I thought it would be. I've got it on. I've got it on hot, so it's only pulling, I don't know, 100 watts or so, but she'll let this thing heat up. It's getting hot. And then she'll turn, while this is heating up, she'll turn the hair dryer on. Get that out of here. I've got too many cords. Okay, here we go. We'll turn that on high. Look at that. 1600 watts. I have, again, just kind of going over the list of goodies. Cradle point router. Refrigerator. Television. Roku sound bar. Jones curling iron. <laughs> and this thing, we're at 1,700 watts. Now I know, I know I can't run the microwave too. I mean, I'm gonna be realistic about this. The microwave and this is not gonna run at the same time. 1,733 watts, and and all this testing that I've done so far, we're at 80 percent capacity. Cut all this stuff off. You know, turn it all off. Turn it all off. There's the curling iron. The curling iron finally kicked in. The curling iron is running, I don't know, let's see, I'm showing 261 right now. I'll take it off. I'm plugging that curling iron. I don't know how quick this responds. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit, but the refrigerator, I think, just stopped. I think it reached temp. Let me go check it real quick. So again, the, the refrigerator has reached temperature, and those are the types of things that you want to, you know, experience because that refrigerator cuts off and on, off and on, off and on. Cradle Point's running full time now. The TV's running full time. The Roku soundbar is running full time. So just entertainment cost. 
what is the entertainment cost? 261 watts of entertainment cost. And um, the calculation saying four hours and 12 minutes, that's just because it's going to have to kind of recalibrate because all of these other things that I was using, let's face it, I'm running at 85% capacity. I could do this for a while, for a while. Now, let's take this another step. I've got a little bit of a challenge, uh, and it's my bad. It's the type of cord that I'm using. I'm going to have to come up with a different cord out there on the uh, unit that I'm using. I'm all power do me a favor the the charging ports that we have for our uh, for anything that we'll be using the solar panels or anything else um, when i plug into 30 amps I, I don't have a way to be able to gain access to it especially for those down style plugs i don't have a forward style plug i don't even know if i can find one they're all typically bent down right uh, and it's right in the way of my charging port so Ugh, I'm going to have to try to figure out something to where we can hook up our solar panels and our 30 amp connection at the same time. Right now, I can't do that. I can't do that. Um, but let's go ahead, since I've got some pretty bright sun that's located out there, let's hook up these solar panels. I'm going to unplug from the camper here and uh, just see what the charging looks like on these units. I, I will tell you at this stage, I have yet to have in our testing any type of a power station that will let me do everything that you just saw. It just isn't, didn't exist. Um, and I think I've got some tricks under my sleeve as far as what we'll be able to do to extend the power of this that I'll do in another video. But again, just using the solar panels alone, I think it's going to be a huge, huge benefit. Let's, let's go hook these things up. They're pretty nice, and I'll show you how those are going to be set up. Before I go outside and set up the solar panels to connect to this S2000 Pro, I wanted to show you some of the adapters that actually come in the portable solar panels. So, uh, first of all, uh, everything that we have are the MC4 style connections, as you see here, uh, that connect to the solar panels. So I like that. That's universal. You can find virtually any adapter to anything, regardless of whether it's a power station or if you're going to hardwire these into any type of a solar controller. It's universal, uh, in, in purely my opinion. Uh, but they do provide a number of cables here in each one of those. Uh, this one has the MC4 that you see here and then you have your Anderson style connector. So that's one. Now this does not have the Anderson style connector. Uh, keep that in mind. Um, it also comes with the MC4 to this, uh, I think this is a 5.1 barrel connector. Now the interesting thing about this is it also comes with these adapters. So I think uh, every power station that I've looked at to date uh, between whatever is on here, which I think is a 5.1, I think this is the green one here is a 5.5, and they even get larger, uh, a, a wide variety of this style of what I call a barrel connector. So it comes with those. So these can be used with virtually any type of a power station that's out there so far. Um, and then uh, it is, you know, I guess if you wanted to try to charge your car battery, uh, you could do that as well. It has the alligator clips. Um, I don't know that I would do that. But there is an issue. Uh, none of these connectors work with this power station. So I contacted All Power. They do have adapters for that. These panels are more universal. And in some of their other power stations, they do have the barrel style connector or they do have the Anderson style connector, but not the S2000 Pro. It has an XT60. There's XT60, there's an XT90. Uh, the XT60 is this style of connector. Well, it's not a deal breaker for me uh, for a big reason. Um, when I want to be able to hook up the solar panels, I'm going to be putting them somewhere out to the front or to the side of where I'm actually powering the fifth wheel. 
and I'm going to need more distance than one of these little shorty shorty cables that are here. This just isn't going to work. I'm not going to set the power station out on a table and then hook a bunch of cables out there. I'm going to keep it all closed up, safe, and secure, that type of thing. Uh, locked up underneath. Um, I showed you how I actually route the cable on the inside and I can close the door. I would like that from a security standpoint. So I have, a, I have too many cables really for doing these types of things. But this is a 20 foot cable. I will leave you a link in today's notes. I bought this off Amazon. It's, they're, they're not expensive. You can get them 10 feet, 20 feet, 25 feet I think is the longest I've seen so far. They're relatively inexpensive but you can get it with the MC4 type of connector that you have here and then this is the uh, XT60 and it's going to plug straight in. It's going to work like a champ. So that's one thing you're going to have to have whether you're going to use one panel, two panels, four panels, whatever you're going to feed. This thing can take up to 600 watts of panels so um, you know you can really pump some stuff into it and you know if you had a fixed system that's up on the top you're going to run cables down and you're going to have to come up with some type of an XT system XT60 to plug into it regardless of what you do but you're going to have to have this and if you'll notice I've got the MC4 style connectors on this so you'll see that in the configuration I bought this it does not come with the kit all power does not provide this type of cable this isn't a kit per se these are parts you get the you get the solar power station uh, battery station here and then you get the panels but it's up to you to configure it to it so I want to make that point strongly all right so anyway not very expensive and even if it did come with one of these shorties I wouldn't even use it you know n no offense to all power I'd have to have something longer and it's just that's purely my preference uh, one other thing you're going to need is if you're going to run one panel that's fine snap it into this you know cable and plug it in but I've got two I've got two 100 watt panels and uh, because of that I'm going to have to tie them together so you know you're going to need a set of these you can pick these things up for you know six seven eight dollars for a kit they're relatively inexpensive so you've got the you know the, the positive or the negative or the middle or the female side to where you can tie these together so I've got you know a set of these to tie these panels together all right so it's uh, early December it's chilly this morning and uh, we are going to go outside the sun is you know low in the sky in the winter um, so we'll get this at the best angle that we can we're going to set these up uh, I think my power station is somewhere around 84 85 percent I haven't charged it up since I did all this testing that we did in here I wanted to leave it low so we could just see how it would behave with these uh, solar panels so let's head outside in the chilly weather and see if we can get these things uh, hooked up to the station and just see how well they charge. We'll have some nice bright sun, good early morning sun. Let's see, let's see, is it going to wash the camera out? There you can see we just got nice big blue skies if you can't even see the sun. Here's the, uh, here's the configuration that we've got right now. Uh, no shadows in it. Uh, it is close. Uh, I got this about as best as I could do. Um, for the winter sun that we have here, you can see how I'm running the cable back here to the back. And we're getting ready to charge this up. And we'll see how this is going to perform. Uh, before I do anything, uh, I want to just see what the open circuit voltage is and just make sure I don't have any, any connection problems. So we'll do that real quick. That won't take but a second. I've just got a volt -ohm meter here. We'll set it up, see what our voltage is real quick and it should be well these are these are 12 panels 12 volt panels so it should be something over that and i'm looking here yep i've got uh i got good voltage coming open circuit got over 20 20 and a half 20.6 volts okay happy with that all right it is chilly this morning all right let's get this hooked up let's see how she's going to perform as I mentioned, these are XT60 connections. You can see it right here. And now we're just going to plug this guy in right here and see what kind of charging we can get. Look at that. Popped right up. That's exactly what we wanted to see. A little lower than I thought. So, uh, 240 watts. Rock and roll, y'all. That is exactly what I wanted to see. And it just popped right up. That's not too bad. 
Um, they say these are 100 watt panels. Guess what? They're not 100 watt panels. 10.30 in the morning. Uh, let's give it an hour or so. Just see how she's going to behave. It's been an hour and 20 minutes and it just this second turned off at 100%. That's not bad. I, uh, I'm pretty pleased with uh, the use of the solar panels. They did a really great job. Hour and a half. It's just absolutely perfect. I'm very pleased with this S2000 Pro all power portable battery station. Uh, of all the ones that we've looked at to date, and we've had probably eight or nine that's come through I Love RV Life in the last 12 to 18 months, a uh, little bitty 500 watt up to these larger units that we're looking at now. Uh, this one probably has the most features that I'm most pleased with. Again, all of them have USB ports. All of them have one or more 110 volt 20 amp ports. Um, they have a wide variety of solar input. Most, except for this one, has a large charging brick. That's what I like about this. I like the I like the XT60 solar panel input, uh, 600 watts that you could put inside this thing. Um, you saw our test out there with the two provided uh, portable solar panels, those were 200 watt. They were running about 250 to 260 watts when we started. And my sun angle was charging, it was changing, but in just barely over an hour, we went from 88% to 100%. I mean, I could not be happier with that. Again, the 20 volts helps a lot that was going into it aside from the wattage. The more voltage along with the wattage you can put inside these units, uh, the, the better they perform over time. I like not having to deal with a power brick. That's just another thing I have to carry along Another thing I have to deal with, you just plug this thing directly into the wall. You can charge it. Cigarette lighter adapter is available as well. It just really performed extremely well. And, and the other thing that I like about it as well, as you can call it a UPS function, that's why so, so much of the documentation that, that's available. I can have my solar panels connected to this and be using the power at the same time, which I really like. Or if you are using this, say, in a remote cabin configuration, uh, or even using it in your home for some important circuitry, say your furnace or your freezer at home, you could have this plugged into the wall and plug your device into the front of it, and it's powering without this unit. And as soon as power is lost, it goes into a UPS function, and then it would be powering whatever device you were plugged into it, a refrigerator or whatever else. Or if you had, again, like if you had a remote cabin or something like that to where you you have inconsistent power. I love those features. It's just very powerful. Now for mine and Joan needs, this is going to be supplemental power. I really like having this 30 amp connection because I can plug that at 30 amps into the side of the camper and you saw the test. I can run everything that we need to run from, you know, from our entertainment to our refrigerator to cooking, all those things that are there. And then when Joan needs to foo-foo herself up, she can get her curling iron and hair dryer going. You just can't imagine how important that is in this household. <laughs> so I love it. It's a great, great unit. Pricing for these are everywhere. Uh, we started doing this test a couple weeks ago, needing good sun, having to work around three or four days of rain. So everything from we've seen great Black Friday sales to even some current sales that are available now, both on Amazon and the All Power uh, website. So uh, look and look at those. I'm seeing you know standalones of this S2000, and I'm seeing some phenomenal deals of uh, buying both this and some solar panels. I've seen some deals as of just two days ago uh, in the uh, $999 range for multiple panels in this. And again, these are gonna be changing. So this as of you know the middle of December, keep an eye out uh, if you're looking for this. There's some great buys and I'm gonna assume these will continue through the Christmas timeframe. Um, so if you're looking for something to run your entire RV and you don't want to deal with solar panels and 
that you mount on the roof and you don't want to have to deal with batteries and chargers and those types of things. This is a great solution in a mid-size. This is what I would call a mid-size unit. These are not those big giant towers. This will do a great job for you. Thank you, All Power. I greatly appreciate you sending this unit and the solar panels in for us. Uh, and your patience for us to do this review as we've been dealing with a tremendous amount of rainy weather. I really wanted a pretty blue sky as we had today to be able to finish this. Thank you so much for providing that. Um, again, I'll put links in the description today. I'll be putting both links and some additional information if you go to ilovervlife.com for today's blog. You'll see some specs and things like that that are very helpful that you can go down and then links for this unit as well. Love doing these, and thank you for all the comments for those of you who like for us to be able to do these product reviews. Uh, we'll do those as the, we find those that are at least different and innovative. I'm not into just repeating the same thing over and over again. I want either to be able to step up or show something that's really different and beneficial for we RV travelers. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this type of content, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I appreciate it. And just again, thank you so much for watching this. And I, of course, always, I love RV life. Mm -hmm.